All right, so this is a suggestion via a donation. Uh, the name of the video is uh, a seven-year-old's mind-bending question. Apparently, this kid will be asking the question to Neil deGrasse Tyson. All right, that's all the information. All right, let's, let's check it out. Will, like, a black hole be able to suck in another black hole? Whoa. Oh. Good question. Uh, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, wait. <laughs> Will a black hole be able to suck in another black hole? Yes, I think ba pretty much based off of our, our overall current like understanding of the of, of general relativity, I do think that it can happen through a process called uh, uh, black hole merger or the concept of coalescence, at least, right? So I would think that that the black holes are probably going to orbit each other, most likely, um, and then the gravitational pull of the bigger one, most likely, is going to pull in the other one. They're going to merge together and create. A more massive black hole um and i think that's probably how that would most likely happen bro um let's see what else here yeah yeah, yeah that that'll happen i think it'll, i think it'll happen like that at least because and um the overall mass of the new black hole will obviously equal the sum of the original two uh black holes right that's where i'm at like, <laughs> but theoretically feasible i, I do i do think <laughs> it's not past your bedtime or anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question for a little man, guys. Uh, just can I, can I ask what what grade you're in? And, and tell me your name too. Oh, not the super sad sentimental music. Second, and my name is Clayton. Oh, your name is? Oh, I like this Clayton. kid, guys. Clayton, hi, Clayton. Uh, you're in second grade, right? And you're thinking about colliding black holes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I like his mind. You belong in, like, 12th grade, okay? Go tell your teacher 12th. I said, put you in 12th grade, okay? Right. Okay. Uh, so, it turns out, while I was in college, there was a graduate student at my college, at my university, right. whose PhD thesis, this is what you do to get to become a doctor. Not a right. medical doctor, but a professional research doctor in astrophysics. His a fake doctor. Basically, PhD thesis was on the subject of colliding black holes. And what oh, makes okay. it ex an extraordinary problem to solve is that the distortion of the fabric of space and time around one black hole also exists for the other black hole. So you have black holes entering each other's event horizons. So I opened up that thesis. I didn't understand a single page in <laughs> I believe it, Neil. I believe it, Neil. Um, it's an extraordinary disturbance in the fabric of space and time. And it turns out, while I cannot reproduce the calculation, it's, it's a level way beyond what I was doing at the time and even what I'm doing today. But I can tell you that there are people who have recognized what severely distorted space does, what the effect, the severely distorted fabric of space and time. They've studied what effect that has on the passage of time. And it turns out there is a, there is a path you can take right. around two moving black holes that haven't quite collided yet, where you can end up in the past of when you started that journey. So it's backwards time travel, according to calculations from Einstein's general relativity, is enabled by the severely distorted fabric of space and time, such as what you would get with black holes that came in their own proximity. And so uh, beyond that, you really want to sort of watch that from a distance. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would want nothing to do with that. Bro, and I'm talking about I want I want distance. I may not even want to look at it through a telescope. What you're saying right now is wild, Neil. Uh, I've never heard this. I'm gonna have to now thoroughly research this, and it's gonna plague me until the end of time because it sounds like you're referring to time travel. I love time travel. All right. I mean, obviously, I've never time traveled, but I love the concept of, of speaking about these gravitational anomalies. Right. Right. I want to. I want to. want to have a conversation about these things. Right. Like, how can this actually function? And you just defined it in a way that's interesting, but how do you make, how do you get two black holes together? I mean, is it a common thing? I'm not sure that's a common thing, right? Um, at all. And again, 
I'm not sure a human would even want to be near something like that, guys, personally. And so you say what happens, they, they will eat each other and they'll make a black hole that's twice as large right. as the one they started with. Right. Um, but it's, but it'd be quite a ride for any material that's swirling <laughs> in its vicinity. Yeah. So excellent question. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, guys, that was a good one. Um, I think, I don't know if this kid came up with it. I hope he did, because that, that'll be that'll probably make the story slightly better. If, if, if purely the kid sat down and wanted to know what would happen if two black holes collided. That's a great question. Um, I would have never thought, I mean, listen, I guess, I don't know. Like black holes in general, general like are, are time and mind bending, right? So I guess obviously something time oriented probably could happen if two black holes were to collide. Like we could talk about the science of it, sure, right? Or the physics of it, let's say. But does it matter? I think I like Neil's response, okay? Better than my overall mental theory, okay? I, I do like I do like his overall response because now we have some time travel conversations. And anytime we can talk about time travel, it's a great day. Right, it's an absolutely amazing day here, guys. Uh, but all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly.